Hey Kingdom Builders, welcome back to the altar. And if this is your first time joining me here at Kingdom Wealth Ministries, a special welcome to you. Kingdom Builders and newcomers, I have a word from the Lord for you all for the month of October. But before I get into that word, I want to invite those of you who are joining us here for the first time to go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you've been here before and you haven't subscribed, if you visited us here more than once, go ahead and subscribe. What are you waiting for? You know the Lord is speaking to you through this altar. So go ahead and subscribe. Lastly, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you all that I am having a apostolic and prophetic revival in Dallas, Texas next Thursday, October 10th. And I invite you all to come join this body of believers to hear what God is up to, what he intends to do in your community, in your country, in your nation, and what this means for you going forward. There are so many of you. The father is saying now is your time to be commissioned to go. And there's anointing in the room. There is impartation in the room for you that is going to help you be released to the nations with power, with authority, with anointing, and with the supernatural gifts and blessings of the Lord. If you're here for it, somebody type in the comments, I'm here for it. And if you're ready for the word of the Lord, somebody say out loud, let's go. Let's go bring forth the word of the Lord. So what is the father saying for the month in October? This prophetic word comes to you through first and foremost, a vision that the father gave me. In the vision, I saw the hand of the Lord taking a slingshot, bringing and drawing his people back and catapulting them forward. My God, I feel God already. And there are some of you, you've caught this word already because you know what God is up to in your life. The father is saying he is drawing his people back. And for many of you, you have been drawn back. You've been drawn back. And for those of you who have been drawn back, the father is now about to catapult you into the next thing into the next dimension, into the next level and phase of your success for the building up of his kingdom. The father gave me these prophetic words. The father said that this is not for a specific individual, although this individually applies. But the father is saying this is what he is doing in the earth concerning his remnants, concerning concerning his body. And what you are about to start witnessing is that the body of Christ as a whole, as a whole body is about to arise. You're going to see great men and women of God come forth. You're going to see great Christian business leaders, businessmen, businesswomen coming forth. You're going to begin to see the Christian politicians, the Christian lawyers, the Christian doctors gaining notoriety, fame, influence, power. You're going to see them even on the mountain of, of, of media. Amen. And I prophesied this to you all. For those of you who have been seeing those numbers, 444, 777, 111, those are prophetic numbers, not angel numbers, not master numbers. The father was speaking this to you all as well, that there is a coming season that all these things were going to happen. And I declare to you in the name of Jesus, for many of you under the sound of my voice, this is your season. If you receive it type in the comments. This is my season. This was the season prophesied. This is the season that was promised to me in Jesus name. So the father said, this is for the body of Christ that you're about to start seeing Christians arising real ones because the father spoke to me these words. He said, this is for those who are tried and true tried and true. Can somebody type in the comments, tried 
and true. So there are some people when God was doing the drawing back, he was trying them, testing them to see if they were true. And there were a lot of people who were left wanting. And you're starting to see now things coming out in the news because these people have been tried. And when the father tries you, he begins to dig through your life. He begins to see what you've been up to. He's begin to see what's in your heart. What have you been hiding in your heart? What have you been doing in the secret place? So that's why you're seeing on one end, people are falling. People are coming down because the Lord tried them. He tested them. He gave them great grace and mercy, and he found them wanting, and you're seeing judgment on one end. But on the other end, this is the good news, people of God. On the other end, there are those who have been tried, they've been tested, and they have been found by God to be true. True believers, true in the faith, true Christians, true seekers of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, true builders of the kingdom of God. And this word, this prophetic word is for those who have been tried and true, tried and true in Jesus name as a body of Christ. There was a lot of testing going on in September, in October, in July. There are some of you under the sound of my voice, you know, God, you've been testing me all year. Amen. Whose word is that? You've just been tested all year by the Lord. The father is saying he has tried you and he has seen that you are true. And if I was you, I would just shout a praise to the Lord. God, thank you, oh Lord, that you found something down on the inside of me that you can use to make me successful for the building up of your kingdom. God, thank you, oh Lord, that you tested me, that you tried me, that I went through the fire and you have deemed me worthy of the pure gold. Amen. Amen. Tried and true. This is the, the word of the Lord that the father gave me in addition to the vision that he gave me. The father said catapult, catapult. I heard that one word so clearly, catapult, even to the point where I had to look up the etymology of catapult. And I'm going to get to you, get to what the, the meaning of the word is. But I heard catapult. He said, I'm about to catapult his people, my people into great success, great success. Somebody type in the comments, great success, great success. He said, tell my people to rest up and to rest easy and to rest well. Rest up, rest easy, rest well. You know, I get really excited when the father tells me and talks to me about rest because I know that he's preparing me for a season where I'm going to be busy, where I'm going to be needed, where I'm going to be sent for, where he's going to be sending me. And when the father orders rest, it's because he's about to catapult you into another dimension. You're about to go higher with the Lord and you need your energy. You need that time away from all the noise and all the people to rest your body, to rest your soul. Who am I speaking to today? That the father has been telling you to rest and now you know why, because the rest is going to equal to your success. The rest is getting you prepared for success. You have to rest for your success. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, I drop bars over here on this altar. Okay. I could, I could rap a rap about it. Okay. But I'm not going to go there. You know, I'm not trying to win any Grammys right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rest for your success. Rest for your success. The father is saying, he said, get ready for success. Your resting is preparing you for the success that is about to come. You know, I heard about this pastor that right before the Lord launched him into ministry where the nations called for him, this pastor was in a long season of resting. And during this season, he was resting 
actively. So when the father says rest and rest well, he means don't just come become lazy and just stop doing everything. What the father is saying is prepare. It's an active rest. You're, you're, you're going and taking yourself out of the noise and the hustle and bustle. You're sitting yourself down to gain understanding, to gain revelation for we go up by revelation to gain revelation, to gain knowledge, to dig into the scriptures. So this is an active rest for what is up ahead. So this pastor took this active rest and during this active rest, he was writing sermons. This is somebody's word because the father is saying that there is nothing new under the sun. What he did before, he's doing again. So there are even pastors and ministers under the sound of my voice, public speakers under the sound of my voice, that he is preparing you for your next stage. He's preparing you for your next platform. And during this resting time, you are to write the messages, you are to write the visions, you are to write the sermons, make them plain because there's coming a season where you will not have time to do these things. So you have to have this arsenal of messages, of, of words and visions, whatever it is God gives you. Put it down on paper now. So that when he catapults you, you can run with it. Amen. This is an active rest, an active rest. Somebody type in the comments, an active rest, an active rest for your success. So when the time came for this pastor to be catapulted into the spotlight, he was ready with hundreds of messages and sermons. He didn't have to go back into the valley to get it because he was prepared to go. Is there anybody out there where the Lord is preparing you to go? You know the Lord is preparing you to go. So this is your word, amen? The father said, you are well on your way. And I see that there are a lot of people you've been wondering, God, am I prepared? Am I doing the right thing? The father is saying, you are well on your way. A lot of you, you've been seeing that number, that prophetic number 555 popping up. It's because the father is saying, you're well on your way. Don't doubt. Don't fear. Just trust his leading. Trust his guidance. You're well on your way. Amen. The father gave me this, this biblical man of God. You may have heard of him. His name is David. Remember that slingshot that David had? He had some stones that he used in conjunction with the slingshot to defeat one Goliath. And the father is saying, just as David did with that stone and that slingshot, the father is going to do with and through you. So David used the slingshot to defeat a giant. David succeeded is what God used to defeat the giant and to defeat so many others that were coming up against the armies of the Lord. And the father is saying, just as the stone was in the slingshot of David's hand, so is he using you, what he has given you and the success you're about to come into as a weapon of warfare. Amen. So whatever God gives you, whatever he downloaded into your spirit, God is going to use just as he did with David's slingshot, just as he did with David's stone, just as he did with David's hand. So God is going to use you as a weapon to attack and defeat 
the armies of darkness because there has been some armies of darkness commissioned throughout the earth. Some of you, you have been experiencing so many attacks or you've been hearing so many people getting attacked on the left, on the right. And the father is saying, he did it at about whose word is this? This just hit me that there are so many of you under the sound of my voice. This is your word because you know that the Lord is using you to do damage to the kingdom of darkness. And maybe I prophesied this to you before. Maybe you heard it in the prophetic number series. I am here today to tell you that this is the season that you are entering into to do damage to the kingdom of darkness, to take back souls on every mountain out of the kingdom of darkness, to save people, to evangelize, to heal, to set free, to to deliver, to display God's awesome power in the earth. Who am I talking to today? If this is your word, type in the comments, you're talking to me, apostle. You're talking to me, apostle, because I know God has done a work on the inside of me. I feel like I'm ready for war. I feel like I'm a warrior for the kingdom of God. I got this new anointing. I got this new confidence. I got this new fire fire, fire down on the inside of me. And it's that fire that you need to go up against the kingdom of darkness. And if you do not have that fire and you want that fire and you recognize the fire down on the inside of this earthly vessel that God is using for such a time as this, I encourage you to look in the description box. Find the link so that you can attend revival in Dallas, Texas on 1010. God has a word and he has the fire. Amen. Somebody type in the comments, God has the word. Another person type and he has the fire. It's yours so that you can defeat these enemies that are about to come against you, your people connected to you and your nation. Hear me by the spirit of the living God. This is apostolic and prophetic. Amen. Amen. That word catapult, I looked it up in the etymology dictionary. It's that Latin word that means war machine for throwing. Back in ancient days, they had these slingshots. The slingshots were one of the first weapons of warfare. It was one of the first military weapons that were used in war. The slingshot, amen? And it means a war machine, a war machine. Lay your hand on your chest and decree and declare I'm a war machine. My success is a war machine. My money is a war machine. My book is a war machine. My business is a war machine. Everything God has given me, it's a war machine because I use it to go up against the kingdom of darkness. I use it to defeat the enemy. So when there are starving children and the enemy is trying to kill people through famine. God raises up his kingdom financiers as war machines. I'm not going to allow it to happen. I'm going to send money into the nations where the starving children are so that we can feed those babies and they can be nourished and they can rise up and that they won't die before their time so that they can be who God has called them to be so that they can can rise up and become war machines in the hand of the Father. You are a war machine in the hand of the Father. You ought to let the Father use you. You ought to let the Father send you where he's sending you as a war machine. It's not by your might. It's not by your power, but it's by his spirit and his Spirit has chosen you to be a war machine. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but you've seen yourself as a little person. You've seen your person. 
You've seen the promise. You went and saw the promised land. God has given you dreams and visions of it. But when you toured the promised land, you came back with a negative report. You said, I'm a grasshopper in their sight. When the father doesn't call you a grasshopper, he calls you a war machine. The father says, you are not little. How dare you talk down on yourself when God says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. When the father says you are a weapon in his hand. When the father says you are a city set on the hill. Come out of unworthiness. Get the right perception concerning yourself. The father says you are powerful. And he is going to catapult you into success that you can damage the kingdom of darkness with this success that he is giving you. If you receive it, type amen in the comments. Glory to Jesus. He gave me the Logos word. Somebody say the Logos word. It's found in Zechariah 1 verses 14 through 17. I'll read it in the NIV. Then the angel said to me, have you ever had angels speak to you? I have dreams of oh, amazing messages that they bring, encouragement that they bring. Amen. Then the angel said to me, shout this message for all to hear. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies says. My love for Jerusalem and Mount Zion is passionate and strong. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For those of you who are concerned about the war in Israel, Israel fighting with Iran now, the breaking news that has come out about this war, listen to what the Father said in just that one verse my love for Jerusalem and Mount Zion is passionate and strong. I'm going to leave you with that concerning the war in Israel and, and the Iranians and Iran attacking Israel. This is also what the father said. And you're going to find out how and why this pertains to you. The father said, but I am very angry with the other nations that are now enjoying peace and security. I was only a little angry with my people, but the nations inflicted harm on them far beyond my intentions. A part of this catapulting is the fact that some of you have been in sin. Some of you, you were backslidden for a season. You went wayward didn't do what the father told you to do. Disobedience is sin. I don't know if you realize that, but disobedience is sin. There are some of you, you've made some sinful decisions, unwise decisions, and that resulted in you going into a season of lack, a, a season of drought, a season of, of stillness, can't move, can't move forward. For some of you, even going backwards, but this backwards, backward and, and waywardness. The father is saying he is a merciful God. He's a merciful God. And yes, he allowed affliction. Yes, he allowed punishment. Yes, he allowed things to spring up in your life to teach you a lesson, to try you, to test you. But since you passed the test, many of you, the father is saying this drawing back that he did, it at Chikata, he drew you back in your business. He drew you back with your clientele. He drew you back even in your ministry. The numbers wasn't numbering. Who am I talking to today? You used to have these numbers that you were doing. Maybe some of you, you went viral. You experienced social media success, but then he drew you back. He drew you back. He set you down. Amen. Amen. And as the father was drawing you back, it stretched you, it hurt you, it caused you pain. But you didn't realize that he was only drawing you back to catapult you forward. You are going to a higher dimension of success. 
The numbers will begin numbering again. The accounts will be again accounting again. The finances will begin financing again. Amen. You will begin to experience success. That drawback season you were in was just that, a season. Somebody type a season in the comments. It was a season a drawback season. And now you're about to enter into a catapult season. And this catapult season is going to do much damage in God's hands to the kingdom of darkness. Amen. There were nations even that were allowed to inflict harm on God's people. Some of you even living in those nations, you know, your government just has not been governing. Your government just has not been doing the right things. There's been corruption. There's been lies, even engaging the media to lie to you. The father is saying, don't worry about that. He's going to judge those people. He's bringing down those people. And you see what's happening on that mountain of arts and entertainment. Did I not prophesy it through that 444 video? If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. Not the one I released this year, although that number is prophesying some things. You need to go back and watch it. But the numbers series that I released two years ago, a lot of those words are coming to pass today in this season. Amen. And you are a part of it. This is concerning the body of Christ. You see what's happening. It's been prophesied and it's just going to continue. Let me continue with the Logos word of the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I have returned to show mercy to Jerusalem. You might as well go ahead and put your name right there. The father is saying, Tanya, he has returned to show mercy to you. Tanya, you and your children, Tanya, you and your children. The father is saying, I have returned to show mercy to you. I have returned to show mercy to you. My temple will be rebuilt. Amen. Because when God returns to show mercy to you, rebuilding happens. Restoration happens. Who am I talking to today? This is your word for the month of October and beyond. This is just when it begins. Amen. And for some of you, this is a continuance from last month and the previous month. Amen. God has been good. God has been good to this altar. God has been good to you subscribers who know what time it is. Amen. Glory to God. He says, my temple will be re rebuilt, says the Lord of heaven's armies, and measurements will be ta begin taken for the reconstruction of Jerusalem. Say this also. This is what the Lord of heaven army says. Catch this. The towns of Israel will again overflow with prosperity. Somebody type in the comments, prosperity. Prosperity is your portion. Wealth is your portion. Why do you think the Lord sent you to kingdom wealth ministries? Because wealth is your portion. Prophesy to yourself in the name of Jesus. I will become wealthy in Jesus' name. Abundance is your portion. Wealth is your portion. Prosperity is your portion. Amen. Amen. When you look at the Israelites who are the Jews today, they are very wealthy, especially for those of you who are on the arts and entertainment mountain. Who do you think runs that mountain? The Jews. They have all the prosperity, all the wealth, all the movie studios, all the record companies, all the record labels. Amen. Wealthy, wealth, beyond wealth, beyond wealth. This is what God does for his chosen ones. Are you a chosen one? Because if you are a chosen one, God is restoring you. He's rebuilding you and your wealth and success is coming. That is what God does for his chosen ones. Amen. Solomon was chosen. Solomon was wealthy. David was chosen. David was wealthy. God made Moses wealthy before he even launched him into ministry. He adopted Moses into this wealthy Egyptian nation. 
Abraham, the father of our faith, wealthy, wealthy, the wealthy who lied to you and told you that wealth is not yours. The devil is a liar. Amen. You need to rebuke poverty in the name of Jesus. Claim your wealthy place. Somebody type in the comments. I claim my wealth. Put your name on it. It's your destiny in Jesus name. Come to revival on October 10th. There's a wealth anointing for you in that room in Jesus' name. Look in the description box. And if I was you, I'd sew on this word before you even get into the room. The Lord showed me something so powerful. I shared it with my volunteers last night in a meeting. Something so powerful about when we sow on the altar of the Lord, how this transforms and continues moving. It shows up in your life one way, shape, or form, but it never dies. Money never dies. The seed that God gives you to sow never dies. It always bears fruit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Father said, and you will begin to again find comfort because God has chosen you as his own. Oh Lord, what an amazing word. What an awesome God we serve that God takes care of the ones that he calls and chooses, the ones that he uses. He takes care of you. A lot of you, you've like, God, I've been doing your work. God, when is it coming? When is it coming? The father is saying, don't get wary and well-doing. It is coming for you. These things take time. Social media has tricked us into believing that God is a microwave God and he is not a microwave God. He does this over time. And for those of you who have been experiencing the drawback, I'm telling you, this is the time for you to be catapulted in Jesus name. Hallelujah. We thank God for the catapultation of it all. Amen. Amen. The drawback made you come back. Some of you, you found me because God had drawn you back and he was bringing you back. For some of you, as a result of this ministry, this was your comeback. You came back to the father. You gave your life to him again. You rededicated your life to him again. This was your comeback, a coming back to the Lord. And since you came back, God is about to catapult you forward. Amen. Say, I must go forward in Jesus name. Lay your hands on your head and say, I must go forward in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Now the Lord can prepare or now the Lord can propel you forward. He gave me also Isaiah 60, 22, because there have been a lot of you. You don't understand how great the, the call of God is on your life. You don't understand how much you are significant and important to his end time agenda, to his prophetic agenda. This is what the father gave me for you. The least of you will become a thousand. The smallest, a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. Because when the Lord pulls you back and he catapults you, it is a swift action. It's a swift movement. This is something that he does swiftly, quickly. Amen. You've been thinking you are a small family. God, I know you're calling me to the heights. I know you're calling me to greatness. And I see these people that you're calling me to. God, how do I become like those? How do I become like those people when I don't have as much and my social media isn't as great and I don't have a publicist and I don't have a lawyer and I don't have and I don't have and I'm not and I'm not. The father is saying the least of you, the smallest of you will become a thousand. Catch this. He said, I am the Lord. You're not the Lord. 
He is the Lord. So he is saying, this is not about what you can do. This is not about who you are. You've been looking at your own limitations. You've been looking at your own finances. You've been looking at your own circumstances. May I remind you that you are not the Lord. You are not God. And no, you can't do it on your own. No, you can't do it by yourself. That is why you need Jesus. That is why you need the Lord. And the Father is saying to you, I am the Lord. So you don't worry about your own limitations. You don't worry about what you're working with because you're working with something greater. God has you in the palm of his hands. He is the Lord. Don't worry about what you're working with in the natural. Worry and focus on what you're working with in the supernatural, in the spiritual, which is the Lord God Almighty in Jesus' name. Lord, I can't wait to get into revival to preach your word, God. I don't have time enough for this one video to, to say everything that the God, that the Father is giving me even now. But trust and believe God is saying he is the Lord, not you. You're not the Lord. You can't do it. He's going to do it. Amen. Amen. Somebody type in the comments, I am not the Lord, but I serve a God, dot, dot, dot. Amen. We're going to have some fun in the comments today. I am not the Lord, but I serve the I serve a God, dot, dot, dot. And what do those three dots represent? Because you serve a Lord who is infinite. You serve a God who is mighty. You serve a God who is unending, never ending. You serve a God who is eternal. You serve a God who is well able. You serve a God who's never lost the battle. You serve a God who has chosen you and placed gifts on the inside of you. You chose a God who was almighty, all powerful, omnipotent. Amen. Your God is unending. Your God is unending. And he's about to show up for you just as he did before. Remember when you were down and out, how God showed up for you? Remember when he answered that prayer? Some of you need to go back. Go back and think about how good God has been, not just to you, but to your mom and them too. To your daddy, your brothers. Remember how he kept your son out of that prison? Remember when he made the judge give a light sentence? Remember when it was only probation and it could have been 10 years in prison? Remember how he delivered you? How he set you free? How he fed you? How he gave you food? This is the God that's speaking today. This is the God that is showing up. He says, I am the Lord. I am the one that caused the rain to stop. I am the one that sent the rain when there was a drought in your nation. I am the God of heaven's armies. What attack is too hard? Hard for me, says the Lord. Who is the Father speaking to today? Who, Jesus, I feel God all through my body. I feel his anointing. I feel his power. I feel it. I feel it. It's so electric. You know, oftentimes when I lay hands on people and people come back with testimonies, they say, Apostle Quan, when you laid hands on me, I felt electricity go throughout my whole body. They knew that healing was taking place. They knew that they had an encounter with the God of heaven, the God who sets free, who heals, who delivers, who imparts. And I feel that same God now. I can't wait to see you in revival. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hey, Broko Shakata, something great and big is about to happen and break forth throughout the earth. Who the Father gave me? 1 John 4 18. Why? Because he knew that there would be people who are afraid in this season. You know, God is calling you to greatness. You know, you have a great destiny that he has called you to. But a lot of you, you won't even move on this word and haven't moved on these words because of fear. And I asked the father, God, what is it about this fear? How can your people overcome this fear for once and for all? And he answered me again with the Logos word, 1 John 4, 18. I'll read it in the KJV. 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath no, or because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. I know a lot of you don't speak King James Version. I know King James Version is not your native tongue. So let me break down what the Father is saying. He says, when you love God, when you have this perfect love for God, it casts out fear. That when God has called you to do something, it's not you that shows up. It's your love that shows up. Your love for the Father, your love for his people. There are some things that I were I was fearful to do. But when I thought about God, when I thought about the love of Christ, when I thought about his children, his people that I love too much to let down and that I know he loves them too much for me to not show up, that cast out all of my fear. I began to show up differently. I began to freaking show up. Amen. There's some people who won't show up because the fear won't let them. But when you begin to think about the love, when you begin to walk in and engage the love of the father, it casteth out all fear. That fear no longer has a stronghold on you. You need to let your love for God overcome your fear. Amen. Perfect love cast out fear. Fear has torment. Those of you who live in fear, you know that is tormenting. Sitting in your seat when you know God is causing you to approach the stage, to approach the platform, keeping your mouth shut when you know God has called you to speak, that's torment. You feel that torment and that conflict in your body. But when you begin to walk by faith, and that faith is connected to love. You can't have faith without love. You can't have love without faith. Those of you who claim you love God, you will know that you love God truly by how much faith you exercise. I love God, so I'm moving. I understand that faith without works is dead. Amen? So I'm saying I have the faith, but I'm backing it up with my works. I'm not backing down. I'm not shying out. I'm showing up. Let the love of God flow through you. Speak to who needs to be spoken to. Accept the opportunity to elevate, to arise. If you don't, don't come back to me talking about Apostle Juan. Things aren't working out in my life. Well, I'm going to ask you, did you do what God told you to do? Were you obedient? Did you move? Did you go into a voluntary season of dryness, valley? Did you go into the wilderness voluntarily when the Lord told you to? Did you write the book? Did you start the business? Did you overcome the fear? You can do it. Somebody type in the comments, I can overcome fear. Another person prophesied to yourself, I will overcome fear. Speak it into existence. There's no fear here in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Let us pray, brothers and sisters. Father God, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you, oh God, for the catapulting that you're doing in this season, starting with the month of October. Thank you, O oh God, that you're catapulting your people into the greater spotlight to make Christ's name great. Thank you, O oh God, you are causing your people in business and entertainment and, and government and, and media to catapult, to gain more success, more influence, more notoriety. Thank you, O oh God, you are making us famous and you've given us favor with God and man. Thank you, Father God, for the millions of souls we will save collectively. Thank you, O oh God, for the billions of lives we will change and bring to Christ collectively as one body. 
as one body, as one body. God, I speak against division right now in Jesus' name. I call forth unity into the body of Christ, unity into the homes where the mother and the father, the husband and the wife are arguing and bickering. The enemy has caused division. Right now, I speak unity to the homes of your people and I rebuke every divisive spirit even divisive spirits that have tried to come into ministries to divide, even divisive spirits that tried to come into meetings to divide. Father God, we rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your unity and your partnership. Thank you, oh God, that you keep us strong and mighty. Thank you, oh God, that we're about to do damage to the kingdom of darkness like never before. Thank you, oh God, you are elevating your people like never Ever before. Thank you, O oh God, for those that were in the wilderness. They will be in the wilderness no more. Thank you, O oh God, your people are coming into the promised land. Thank you, O oh God, that you're changing their perspective. They no longer see themselves as grasshoppers, but they see themselves as a mighty weapon in the hand of the Lord. Thank you, God, for what you're doing and what you will continue to do. Thank you for the abundant blessings, the prosperity, and the wealth that you're showering down on your children starting in the month of October. And it's in Jesus, your perfect son, your perfect son, the perfect lamb of God, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen again. Well, if this was your word and you'd like to support the ministry, I invite you to do so by locating the information in the description box to sow a seed. I invite you also to attend Revival in Dallas, Texas on October 10th, 2024. October 10th, it's next Thursday. I want you in the room. The Father wants you in the room. Come and receive an encounter with the Lord that would transform your life and the lives of those connected to you forever. There's anointing in the building. There's impartation in the building. God is in the building. He's already there. He's already gone before us. Amen. Amen. I love you, brothers and sisters, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, go forth and prosper. Goodbye.